Implementing .NET apps with Copilot is great, but what if you want to use real AI magic inside your application? And that is where the OpenAI API comes in. So let me show you how to use it in this tutorial and you can even download the complete source code with the link in the video description below. All right, now here's our little example application. It's called Game Item Forge. And what I want to do here is actually we have a bunch of items here, let's say some role-playing game items and other stuff as well. And I want the OpenAI API now to create a story behind that item, right? If I click view story here, Excalibur has no story or the soul edge has no, nothing here has a story. Even the portal gun doesn't have a story. So when I click generate story, currently it is just waiting for a second and then nothing happens. But the goal now is in this tutorial, it is to create a story just based on the name with the help of AI. So let's do that. Real quick, if you ever wondered how to actually use AI like GitHub Copilot or ChatGPT in real .NET projects, I've just released a brand new course called .NET Web Development with AI and Copilot. In it, we build full Blazor web apps together using Copilot, GPT, and Cloud Sonnet as our coding partners. You will see how to use Copilot inside Visual Studio, build APIs with EF Core and the vertical slice architecture. We will even add AI features with the OpenAI API and add unit tests to your projects. So if that sounds like something you would love to learn, check out the link below in the video description. There is a huge launch discount just waiting for you. Here is our project already. So these are all the preparations. And as you can see, list of game items, you can find it here. We here have the uh, generate story button. And currently this is the implementation of that thing. So in here, we should actually call the OpenAI API to generate a story, right? And regarding the models, I think you get the idea. We have our game item here, which is pretty simple. I'm using an in-memory database with EF Core. So here are all the items. And by the way, I also prepared this with the help of GitHub Copilot. We have our game item service. I know no interface here, but now let's do that properly with dependency injection with a new open AI service, let's say. And the very first thing we should do is add a NuGet package. So manage NuGet packages it is. We go to browse and then we can just search for open AI. And this is the official package. You can also use Azure AI open AI, but then uh, the, the syntax is a little bit different. But here you can just use that one and then also use the documentation. Uh, of OpenAI and then see how to actually implement that. Now, when this is done, we can actually already create our service. So in here now, let's just add a new item and this will be our I open AI. Let's call it like that service. We hit add and this thing only gets one method and that would be then the generate item description method. So task string and then we say generate item description or story async. This is up to you. And here now we have our item name. This is correct. So that's that. And now let's add the implementation already. So here now we add a new item again. And this time it is the open AI service using our interface, the I open AI service and it wants a method implemented, of course. Now we can use the suggestion of Copilot or we just first say implement the interface. Now we can register this real quick. So here, before we build the app, let's say builder services at scoped and then I, that's the one. Perfect. So now get back here. And the first thing we need actually is a chat client. All right. And to do that, we say private read only. This is the chat client we will always use. Well, we only have one method. So I think this makes sense. Chat client. We also call this chat client. And let's say now this is a new chat client with the following data. The first one would be actually the model. Now we have a bunch of options regarding the models. Of course, we can use GPT-5, we can use GPT-4.1, whatever, but there are also the mini models. They are a lot cheaper and often they are totally sufficient. 
So let's use this one. So here now we write GPT 4.0 for 4.0 and then the mini model. And then we also need the API key. Now I stored the API key in the user secrets. So let's check this out real quick. Here, when you go to OpenAI Com API, you can actually log in to the API platform, for instance. And in here now, you can go to your settings and there you find the API keys, right? And I'm sure I can trust you guys, right? So let me show you. Here you just create a new secret key or in my case, I already have it down here. So with .NET user secrets init, you would initialize the user secrets. Just make sure that you are in the project uh, directory. So when you have a look here, I am actually in the project, not the solution one, right? When I would be up here, this would not work. So be in the project directory and then you can run, where was it? There it is, .NET, you, nope, in it. Then you can run this thing here. I can trust you guys, right? I can leave that key here. I'm sure this is totally fine. Set this thing and to double check, then you can just hit user secrets list and there you have it. And this is then our name or the key for our API key. So here now we actually need the configuration. So I configuration it is configuration and here now we can say configuration and then in brackets the open ai come on api key yep that's the one i hope all right okay now when this is covered then we can actually implement the generate item description async method now to get a result we actually have to prompt our ai model in this case now gpt for O mini, right? But how would this actually look? Let's say we have our result here. And then again, we can use now our chat client and then call a method like complete chat async. We could use streaming. This would then mean similar to if you use ChatGPT already, you know, you get these tokens then of text there and they build up again and again, or we just say, give me the complete thing and then, uh, or first generate the complete thing and give me the complete result. So as you can see, generates a completion for the given chat. So now what this thing wants is a list, or as you can see there, an I enumerable of chat messages. Now, how would that look first? Let's just add now here. So this doesn't give us an error, hopefully. Yep. And then we can return from that the results and then this gives us yep I think this is our nope this is not completely it we have actually uh, a value and from that value then we have content that we can use and I'm pretty sure there are more ways to do this and then the final text so we really just want to okay maybe it would have uh, suggested the better stuff when I would not have the typo in there but anyways I think you get the idea. We have a result from that, then the value, get the value received from the service, then a content of the message, and then just the text. This is what we want from it. And how do we get the correct text, the description or the story of the item? Well, it's actually similar to using ChatGPT. We just write some text there, but first define our messages. So here now, this is a new list of chat messages. And let's do this one step after another because it is already suggesting stuff here. And the first thing is the system chat message, right? The system chat message, you use this one to tell our model what it should be, right? So here now we can say something like it is, for instance, suggesting here you are a creative assistant that generates vivid and engaging descriptions for fantasy game items which is actually a pretty nice suggestion. I got something here on my other screen that I prepared. So it's actually something very similar. So you are a creative, in this case now, fantasy RPG writer who creates epic item descriptions. Okay, so this is the first message. And then we got a user chat message. So similar again, yeah, but let's, change it a little bit 
So we got the system chat message covered. This is what our GPT model now should be, a creative fantasy writer. And now what it should ex actually do as that creative fantasy RPG writer. And for that, I got something else here, which is create an epic and engaging backstory for the legendary item called and then here we add our item name so this is the item name okay and then we add something else we say the description should be two to, should be two to three yep paragraphs long and include let's see the items legendary origin and then its magical or special properties and then also why adventurers seek it make it ex make it exciting and immersive okay i hope this works all right and now here we just add the messages and this is it this is everything we have to do. But now, of course, to use this, we have to jump into our uh, game items razor file. And now we remove the task delay. And here now we say var description is actually await. And here now we need our OpenAI service. So let's inject this real quick. So add inject I open AI service, open AI service, great. And now here we call the open AI service, generate item description async with our item name. And then we say await game item service because we have a method here to update the item description with the item ID and again, the description. And then in the end we say items is now await get all items async. And with that, we are done and can then show the description. So let's try that real quick. All right, here we are again. Again, view story, nothing happens. But now let's generate the story here. Something is happening. We're done. Story created. View story. Okay, there's a lot. In the age when the realms were divided by strife and treachery, treasury, a celestial being known as... <laughs> okay, I, I did not do this before. I really did not test this before, what the results will look like. So this is crazy. Now, of course, we can refine this by a better, let's say, formatting or stuff. What about the portal gun? That would be interesting. Generate the story here. All right, view story. The Forgotten Age of the Ethereal Convergence. Now, it doesn't have any idea of a uh, portal, actually, but still, I think this works. Now, let's grab some... One, one more... Okay, maybe BFG. View the story. As the BFG forged in the heart of Mount Zendar, a volcano bubbling with the fiery essence of creation itself. Okay, this is great. All right, now I think you got the idea. But you know what? We prompted the AI now hard-coded, let's say, inside our application. But what if you want the user to prompt it to ask questions to the AI. Well, in that case, you would just build a simple chatbot. And if you want to know how to do that, check out this video here on the screen.